Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video, basketball is back. We finally have some more games tonight now that we are post All-Star break. And so in this video, we're gonna be talking about some things that I personally am very excited to see here in the NBA now that the All-Star break is over. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy the NBA, then consider subscribing. I upload basically every single day. All right, let's get right into it. Number one, seeing how the new pieces fit. And this isn't specific to one particular team, but there are a lot of new pieces around the league and some of them are more interesting than others like seeing how D'Angelo Russell fits in Minnesota and Andrew Wiggins fits in Golden State and some are less interesting like seeing how Andre Drummond fits in Cleveland and Reggie Jackson with the Clippers and we saw some of these guys like the traded pieces we saw them for a few games in between the trade deadline and the all-star break but having a little bit more of a consistent sample of what these guys are going to look like on their new team should be really really interesting and how it's going to shape potentially the playoff race and how these teams play in the postseason how Justice Winslow is going to look in Memphis if he comes back this year from injury if Andre Godala is going to significantly move the needle for Miami or if that's just going to to turn out to be a long-term salary cap play for the summer of 2021. There's a lot of interesting things to look at from what ended up being a much more intriguing trade deadline than a lot of people thought. And then obviously, like I said, there's some buyout pieces, guys like Damari Carroll and Jeff Green going to Houston. So I'm excited to see kind of where all these new pieces fit as we get back into basketball for the stretch run. And that kind of segues us into number two, and that is the Rockets small ball. And again, this is something that we saw a little bit of post-trade deadline and then before the All-Star break, but seeing how much they're really going to lean into not playing a traditional big in their rotation in most of their games. Having guys like P.J. Tucker and Robert Covington and Al Damari Carroll and Jeff Green playing essentially the four and the five spot for this team, and more than anything, if it's going to be effective, because stylistically and aesthetically, it's not going to look that much different. Obviously not having Capella out there to roll to the rim, but they did, they did this a lot with their second unit, even when Capella was still on the roster but I want to see if this is going to move the needle for this team because Russell Westbrook has been playing better lately since they went to this all small lineup Harden seems to be a guy that's a little bit tired at the moment but maybe he'll be rejuvenated post all-star break and I'm interested to see if they're going to be able to go on any kind of a run here down the stretch and potentially improve their seating in what is going to be a very tough Western Conference playoff bracket. So I'm interested to see kind of how it looks, but also if it improves their team at all, because I think that makes them the one true wild card here in the Western Conference. They're kind of like Philadelphia in the Eastern Conference for me in terms of a team that could really blow up the playoff picture if they're weird and interesting and, and different style plays well in the postseason and post all-star break if they go on a good stretch run if they start to come together they could be the true wild card in the playoffs so i'm really interested to see kind of how that comes together and speaking of the playoffs as we get now to number three in both conferences i'm really interested to see how hard teams push for the top two seeds because really on each side the seven and the eight seeds are pretty significantly easier at this point in terms of the matchup than something that you would have to deal with from three through six, depending on your seating, right? So one and two is more important in the Eastern Conference because you're playing either the Nets or the Magic, which is much easier than Philly all the way down Boston, Toronto, Indiana. Whereas in the Western Conference, it's not as of, it's not as much of a necessity because it's going to be the eighth seed, which could, could be the Pelicans, which could be a really tough matchup or Memphis or Portland or San Antonio and the seven seems like it's going to be Dallas. So it's not as important, but in terms of teams that have been playing well for the entire season, those top six seeds are much more difficult in the West than they are the seven, the eight seeds. But in the Eastern Conference more specifically, how hard are teams like Boston and Toronto going to push for the two seed? Because it seems like Giannis and the Bucks are gonna get the one in the East. And I would be pretty confident that the Lakers, even though they do only have a slight lead at the moment, are going to end up with one of the top two seeds in the West. So which teams are going to prioritize that and which are going to say we're fine we're confident in our ability to win any series in the postseason regardless of our matchup we don't care if we're the three or even the four seed because in the west there's teams like utah like the clippers like the nuggets that are going to be pushing for that top two seed and then in the east teams like boston and toronto as well and then depending on how well they play post all-star break maybe even teams like indiana and philadelphia can get involved so it's going to be interesting to see not only how well those teams play but again how much they prioritize pushing for that better playoff matchup in the first round and if that ends up having an effect on their postseason play number four now it simply says more zion i'm so excited to continue to see how this guy develops he has played about as good of a 10 game stretch to start his career as you could possibly ask 
four. Obviously, the first couple of games weren't outstanding for the entire games because he was on a minutes restriction and things were a little bit weird for most of his first game. But ever since then, he has looked like the exact kind of player that we all hoped that he would be when he came into the NBA. And I'm really, really invested in watching as many Pelicans games as I can possibly fit into my schedule over the next couple of weeks and months because I'm not sure that we're going to get to see him again for a while. If they don't make the postseason, Zion's going to be out of our lives on the basketball court for a while, all the way until next season. And that's going to be sad because we just are starting to scratch the surface and seeing really what this guy is going to look like. Obviously, I'm hoping that he stays healthy and I want them to prioritize that. But I'm so excited now post All-Star break to just watching Zion play basketball and potentially pushing this Pelicans team to the eighth seed and maybe getting a first round matchup with the Lakers. I'm not really anticipating that happening. So I'm going to enjoy the last 20 or 25 games that we have left of Zion here the rest of the year. Number five now, kind of similar to a point that I made earlier, but the race for the eighth seed in the Western Conference is really, really interesting. As I mentioned, the Pelicans have an outside chance as do the Spurs and Trailblazers but kind of the up and coming team here is the Memphis Grizzlies and they've made some changes to their roster with bringing in Justice Winslow losing guys like Jay Crowder so I'm interested to see if they're going to be able to stabilize and continue how well they've been playing lately to lock in that eighth seed or if they're going to start to slip and some of these more veteran teams like Portland and like the Spurs are going to be able to make moves and again even the Pelicans as well the Spurs are a team that is going to try very hard to push for the playoffs to keep their streak alive Portland has it seemingly been behind the eight ball the entire year with injuries and just not having the best constructed roster they've been fighting for that eighth seed all season and then again the Pelicans are starting to creep up in the race as well so who is going to end up getting that seed and at the end of the day it's probably not going to matter because the Lakers or whoever gets the one seed is probably going to pummel them in the first round personally I think Memphis and or the Pel and or that doesn't make any sense Memphis or the Pelicans would be the most interesting first round matchup for LA just because of the youth and getting those guys playoff experience but regardless it's going to be interesting to see who ends up with that and on the opposite end of that the race to the bottom should be really interesting as well. And I understand that that doesn't sound necessarily interesting if teams are going to be tanking and, and trying to lose games now post All-Star break, jockeying for, uh, you know, draft pick positioning. But it, it's more so about the teams that they're putting on the floor. And it's probably not going to be pretty, but is someone like Cleveland going to start prioritizing more Kevin Porter Jr. moments, uh, minutes? If the Spurs go on like a five game losing streak are they going to accept that the postseason just isn't in their plans for the season and get some of their younger players more minutes so it's more about the lineups being put on the floor the opportunity for younger players to be getting more opportunities and how that's going to affect their teams moving forward more so than just all these teams are tanking because especially in the eastern conference the playoff picture is pretty set and then in the west if you're not one of those four teams i talked about earlier vying for the eighth seed then you're probably going to start to see more younger lineups and just kind of some interesting things developing that maybe you're going to end up being fool's gold or could impact next season in terms of different lineups and different younger players getting minutes and potentially being pieces down the road all that stuff for me personally is really interesting and last up now the playoffs number seven has to be getting ready for the postseason because I've said this and I don't even know how many videos at this point this year I cannot wait for the postseason this year and it's there's going to be so many incredible matchups the 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 playing field is so much more level where we could see more upsets we could see a six seed potentially make the conference finals we could see all kinds of stuff in the western conference because i think there's six teams that are really really good on that side of the bracket and we could even see teams like memphis steal a game or two in the first round uh in the in the eastern conference side the magic if they have a really good shooting series they're really good defensively so maybe that could push them into a game or two uh winning a game or two against milwaukee and then all of the storylines that come with the postseason, right? Is Giannis going to be able to get it done in the playoffs? Can Philly figure it out and be the wild card in the East? Is Toronto going to be able to sustain their postseason success from last year? On the Western Conference side, are the Clippers going to be able to be healthy enough to get everything together and actually be a true th threat like I think that they are? Are the Lakers going to be healthy enough and fresh enough after a fantastic regular season? Is a team like Denver or Utah or the Rockets going to be able to find that magic in the postseason and make a run at it and beat one of the two LA, LA teams? Or are we going to to get an LA Western Conference Finals in the Staples Center for seven games and how exciting that would be. And then on the, East, on the Eastern Conference side, is anybody going to be able to beat the Milwaukee Bucks? So many storylines this postseason and that's probably what I'm most excited about as I continue to say, I feel like I'm probably 
I don't know, six or seven videos throughout the season, but it has to be mentioned here because I am so excited for the 2020 postseason. And there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video, and I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.